Welcome to the channel and welcome to a new season. Hey, well, it's great that it's fall and everything, uh, but I don't know that I would exactly call it new, right? I mean, we turned our furnace on a couple weeks ago up here in Michigan and, you know, it's, uh, to quote the SNL skit, it's, uh, it's sweater weather. Oh, I was actually referring to the new season of Dad's Talk Tech, but we are going to be discussing a traditional fall activity. Oh, come on, no. I, I don't even want to think about raking leaves. I mean, <laughs> up here in Michigan, trees grow like weeds, right? And they're pretty and all, but it takes hours to rake it all up, even with a small yard like mine. And then uh, hours later, your neighbors, their trees have already dumped an extra foot of leaves. It's, it's incredible. I don't even want to think about that. Keith, I had another traditional fall activity in mind. I purchased an aerator to pull behind my tractor, and so you actually get to sit back, watch me assemble that aerator, and then use it on my yard. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's much better. You're talking about aerating. That's making the little poops, right? Um, yeah, I like that a lot better. I'm, I'm really good at watching you work. I'm, I'm really good at that. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, thanks, I think. Something tells me that's a bit of a backhanded compliment. Am I right? Would I ever do that? Um, yeah. Like, every day. And twice on Sunday. Oh, and we're recording on a Sunday. Exactly. And that pretty much confirms my suspicion. And speaking of Sunday, I better, uh, turn off my phone notifications here for our fantasy football team. I wouldn't want to, uh, get distracted by your getting demolished. Well, moving along to the topic at hand, we're going to do something a little bit different in our technology exploration today. We're going to be looking at yard work technology, which we haven't done to this point. And I'm looking forward to doing more of it in the future. Yeah, that's great. I, I'm a big fan of this topic. I'm looking forward to this. You know, several years ago, <clears throat> I, uh, I bought a battery powered and an ego uh, push lawnmower for my yard. And uh, yeah, so I'm a big fan of this yard work technology topic. I'm interested. Aha, you and me both. Oh, all right. You know, I have to ask, you mentioned you purchased a, a tow behind uh, aerator for your tractor. I have to I just have to ask, you know, why did you decide to purchase that as opposed to, you know, paying a service, for example, just to do it once or twice per year and call it a day? Keith, that's a great point. I mean, for most people, I would say, yes, absolutely probably makes sense to hire someone to come in once or twice a year and get that service completed and call it good. But for me, my yard's an acre and a quarter. So for the cost of getting that service completed once, I could actually buy that aerator and own it. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense actually. Um, you know, in my situation, having a, a large implement that's, let's say it's 48 inches wide probably at least, um, isn't going to work for me as I have a small yard and and it's difficult to store uh, something that big also uh, for me, right? And that's actually circling back to the ego. That's one of the things I like about it is that the handles fold down in such a way that it's able to be stored vertically. So it takes up a very small footprint in my garage. Spot on, Keith. For me, it makes sense to purchase this, store it, and get my money's worth over time. Now, I do have to be careful of what I like to call the death spikes. Ooh, death spikes. Okay, that's exciting. So I assume you're going to show us the overall assembly, the usage scenario, uh, as well as your overall impressions for this. Uh, am I correct? You are correct, sir. Yeah, Keith, that's exactly the plan. So let's start with the exact model that I purchased. It is the 45-0299 48-inch tow aerator. Now, this is a 48-inch wide. Uh, it has 32 tines on it. So this thing is a big beast. Okay, so whenever I hear or see the word assembly, it, it does make me cringe a little bit. So I have to ask, how was the assembly process here? I have to be honest here. I read some online reviews and they all said the same thing. It is a project and a half and it lived up to every bit of every one of those reviews that said so. Okay, interesting. So what exactly made it so difficult? It's really a combination of factors, I think. First off, there are a ton of parts, including large metal pieces, nuts, bolts of various sizes, and lots of uh, really sharp tines. As well, this device is built pretty heavily and sturdy, and so it's got a lot of heavy parts, which makes manipulating this around 
um, a difficult task. On top of it all, the instructions, well, they leave a lot to be desired. So there's a lot of illustrations that aren't particularly detailed, and there's probably not enough of them to really outline what it is you truly need to do. I found myself backtracking and undoing certain steps because originally I couldn't tell how it was supposed to be assembled, and then I discovered in later steps, once I'd assembled some of those pieces, that they weren't where they needed to be for the further steps, and that was a problem. I would love to see them have considerably more breakouts and a little bit more detailed diagrams so you could truly tell where all of the parts belong and skip a lot of that back and forth trying to take things off of what you've already assembled in order to get them back into the right place. What I'd really like to see them do is maybe put a QR code in the instruction manual and have that link to an assembly video that goes step by step and very detailed through the assembly process and that would make it a much better experience for those people that were purchasing the device. Yeah, that's that's why I cringe. You know, this this topic is actually pretty close to my heart. Um, you know, why are these assembly instructions so bad across so many product categories? You know, pretty much all product manufacturers make uh, drawings or they make the assemblies in, in CAD packages like NX, CATIA, CREO, AutoCAD, Solid Edge, SolidWorks. It's always one of those. They all have the features available to like make explosions of those assemblies and annotate them in certain ways. But the people who do that um, and have the, that skill set, they're not necessarily storytellers, right? So, so um, a lot of what I think happens a lot of times is that there's no department or person in charge of the experience of how that storytelling happens. You mentioned it. Wouldn't it be nice to have a video about that, right? Um, that costs a lot of money. I'll bet you a lot of uh, product manufacturers are saving that money and just assuming that eh, some guy on YouTube is going to like explain it all to everybody anyway. Why should we, why should we pay for this? But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an expensive thing, especially for complex assemblies that very few companies actually get right. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Now that I've assembled this once, I bet you I could assemble it again in about half the time as it took me the first time. And you'll see from the video that this assembly actually ended up spanning two different days. I probably started a little bit too late in the day, but still I had probably over four hours invested in this assembly. And it was a lot of assemble some pieces and then remove the pieces because that wasn't quite right. The way the diagrams were illustrated, it really didn't show me that that wasn't gonna be right until later steps, then I discovered, no, this isn't gonna work. I have to, to take this off and do it a little bit differently. And quite honestly, thank goodness, I actually read some other reviews that suggested that I leave those tines or those spikes off until the very last step in the process. I don't know what the manufacturer was thinking when they recommended you put those on the very first step, but I can't imagine working with these death spikes on this complex assembly and the heavy uh, devices and trying to assemble around that, I, I probably would have ended up with at least 20 or 30 cuts in that process. So fortunately, people had recommended that you put that to the end, which I did, it made a ton of sense. If there was one thing I was gonna recommend the company did, if they changed their instructions, it would be to do that as well, because it just does not make sense to have those spikes to have to work around. And they are extremely sharp. They are just short of razor blade sharp. Yeah, it, it's sad. It's, it's hard to believe that they would have you install the the super sharp spikes at the very beginning and then work with that part as you built out the whole assembly. That's crazy. You know, it kind of goes back to what I was saying, how um, the person who was responsible, I'm willing to bet, right, that the person who was responsible for making those assembly instructions probably never actually did it. There was no uh, release engineer involved in it. Uh, and uh, when the release engineer is not involved, that's probably not a good thing. Truly. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the time lapse of the assembly because quite honestly, we would never keep anyone's attention for four hours of the assembly process. And then show you a little bit of the actual usage. And then finally, we'll wrap things up with some of my thoughts on how the aerator worked. Roll the film.
I'm not sure if this uh, video really did the process of assembling this justice where I mentioned that I had to install some parts and take some parts off. There was a lot of that. That was probably my biggest frustration in this entire assembly process, to be honest with you. The poor instructions and then that leading to doing work and then undoing work and then redoing the work. Now, that being said, once assembled and I got to use it, that's where the payoff really comes in. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still mesmerized by the sight of those plugs or those little poops just flying off the spikes as the axle was spinning around. Very mesmerizing. Yeah, it was fun setting up that shot. So I'll tell you, once assembled, this unit really did do a great job. Now, one thing when I was originally looking for a unit, I was trying to find one that had a handle that I could reach from you know, my tractor from the riding position so I could adjust whether it was engaged or not. And that turned out to be completely unnecessary. Oh really, how's that? I, I could imagine that that would, that would be a good thing to have that. I thought so too, until I was actually using the unit. So what I discovered is with the weight that's on the unit, and they recommend up to 140 pounds so that you can get the, the penetration depth of those knives into the soil, is it really takes quite a bit of oomph to use that handle to raise the deck up or lower it down into the earth. And because of that, it really is not very practical to try and move that handle while you're still on your uh, device that's pulling the, the trailer or pulling that aerator. So I'd recommend that you really only try uh, adjusting that by dismounting whatever's pulling it and uh, using that handle to to raise and lower as you need to engage and disengage it. To do otherwise, I think you'd really be risking a back injury, and Keith, that's the last thing you'd need to be trying to do. Oh man, you're making my back hurt just talking about it. Yeah. So, all that said, this, this, this is making good sense. Uh, what about your overall impressions, and would you recommend this product? In spite of the awful assembly process, once this was put together, I have to say it, it really did a, a very good job at the, the purpose of what I purchased it for. It was easy to use, it did a nice job of aerating the lawn, so from that standpoint, I'm super pleased. I will reinforce the instruction that you water the lawn a couple hours ahead of time before you actually use this, and that way it's going to allow those knives to sink in and really pull up a nice plug. Mm, yeah, and speaking of plugs, I'm going to do one right now. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our channel. I mean, come on, you're actually watching this right now. Subscribe to the channel, okay? And if you happen to like this particular video, hit the like button, right? And don't forget about the bell. That way you can get, um, if you click it, you'll get notified of new content whenever we put it out there. Couldn't have said it better myself. So for Keith and Bruce, you'll see us on the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.